Sports Tidbit coming back to you with another video. Before we dive into it, can you Mike Tyson the like and subscribe button? Today we're diving deep into the career of one of the greatest pitchers to ever grace the mound, Greg Maddox. Stick around to find out why Maddox's mastery of pitching earns him the title of the greatest pitcher of all time. We're celebrating the incredible career of Greg Maddox known as the professor for his cerebral approach to pitching. His career is a master class in precision control and strategy. Greg Maddox was born in San Angelo, Texas. His father was in the military, so the family moved around a bit and even lived in Spain for a while. Eventually, they settled in Las Vegas. Greg became a star at Valley High School in Vegas. He was class of 1984. The number one movie in the country that year was Ghostbusters. The number one song that year was Prince's When Doves Cry. In Vegas, Greg and his brother Mike were mentored by Ralph Meter. Ralph grew up in Cincinnati and played minor league baseball. For health reasons, later in life, he relocated to Las Vegas and began camps teaching baseball and sportsmanship, honor, integrity, and the value of hard work. Mater preached the value of movement and location above velocity and advised throwing softer when in a jam instead of harder. Maddox would later say, I believed it. I don't know why. I just did. And I was learning that at the time that movement is more important than velocity. Ralph passed away before Greg graduated high school, but after Maddox had a standout high school career, he drew the attention from Major League Scouts. As a junior, he helped Valley High School win the state title. Here's a glance at the Chicago Cubs scouting report estimating the value of the pick of Greg Maddox at $85,000. The Cubs drafted Greg in the second round of the 1984 draft. That summer, his professional career began when he played rookie ball with the Pikesville Cubs of the Appalachian League in Pikesville, Kentucky. That year, he went 6-2 with a 2.63 ERA. In 1985, he played A-ball with the Peoria Chiefs in Peoria, Illinois. 2-2 pitch to Kim Grant. At the outside corner for a strike, the first strikeout of the night for Greg Maddox. He went 13-9 with a 3.19 ERA. Look at him. He's a beanpole. Now let's listen to a clip of him talking about the difference between minors and high school. In high school, they would just, they would just swing at anything. And I got hit a lot harder in high school than I am here. Because they would, I would throw it and they would swing no matter where it was, they would just swing. And here, they look for a pitch and if it's there, they hit it. If it's not, then they let it go and wait for the next one. Next year, 1986, he started the year off in double-A for the Pittsfield Cubs in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. He went 4-3 with a 2.69 ERA and was surprised when he got called up to triple-A. I think the biggest surprise was probably when I got called up from from double-A to triple-A because I didn't see that coming. Maddox tore it up in triple-A that year. He went 10-1 and one with a 3.02 ERA. And by the end of the year, he got called up. On September 3rd, 1986, Greg made his debut with the Cubs. The game was started the day earlier, but was postponed because of darkness since Wrigley didn't get lights until 1988. His first appearance in a major league game was as a pinch runner for a catcher, Jody Davis, in the 17th inning against the Houston Astros. Maddox then pitched in the 18th inning, allowing a home run to Billy Hatcher and taking the loss. Five days later, he got his first start, which was a complete game victory. That was followed by three losses and one win to finish the 1986 season with a 2-4 and four record with a 5.52 ERA. In 1987, he started off the big leagues but had some struggles. He went 6-14 and 14 with a 5.61 ERA. Because of his struggles, he got sent back down to AAA Iowa twice in August, but there he went 3-0 and oh with an ERA under 1. After the 1987 season, Maddox and his brother went down to Venezuela where they'd play together and Greg would develop his pitching philosophy and try to improve for the next year. Down in Venezuela, Maddox worked with his former pitching coach, Dick Pohl, who encouraged him to work on getting ground outs instead of trying to strike out every batter. It was the 1988 season when Greg Maddox started to blossom into the ace that we all came to know and love. That year, he went 18-8 and with a 3.18 ERA. He'd go on to make two all-star teams with the Cubs, win three gold gloves, and in his last year in Chicago, before going to Atlanta, he won his first Cy Young, going 20-11 and with a mind-boggling 2.18 ERA. His legacy only grew stronger after joining the Atlanta Braves in 1993. In 1993, his ERA was 2.36. And then a 1.56 ERA in 1994 and a 1.63 ERA in 1995. Just amazing. He also won Cy Young his first three years in Atlanta 
meaning that he won four consecutive Cy Youngs. Let's talk numbers. Like I mentioned, Greg Maddox won four consecutive Cy Young awards from 1992 to 1995. He had a career ERA of 3.16, over 23 seasons, but what's even more impressive is his pinpoint control. Maddox is the only pitcher in MLB history to record over 3,000 strikeouts while issuing fewer than 1,000 walks. What made Maddox unique was his ability to outthink hitters. He wasn't known for overpowering speed, but for his incredible ability to locate pitches and deceive batters. His signature pitch, the two-seam fastball, had devastating movement and pinpoint accuracy. Greg Maddox was like a chess player on the mound. He knew what the batter was thinking before they even stepped into the box. Facing him was a mental battle. You'd think you had him figured out, but he was always one step ahead. Much of Maddox's success was rooted in his preparation and intelligence. He meticulously studied hitters, understood their weakness, and exploited them with surgical precision. Let's look at a breakdown of how Maddox approached pitching. Watch how he sets up the batter. First, he paints the outside corner with a two-seam fastball, then comes back with a changeup that drops off the table. The batter has no chance. In addition to his Cy Young awards, Maddox won 18 gold gloves, demonstrating his prowess as a defender. He was a master of filling his position, often turning potential hits into outs with ease. The term Maddox was coined to reference when a pitcher pitches a complete game with fewer than 100 pitches. That's a feat that Maddox did 13 times. On July 22, 1997, he had a 78-pitch complete game. Maddox's accolades are numerous, but his impact goes beyond the awards. He was a leader and a mentor, helping to shape the careers of many young pitchers who followed in his footsteps. Another amazing Greg Maddox record is he holds a record for the most seasons with at least one stolen base and no caught stealings. That record was 10 seasons. At the age of 42, he became the oldest pitcher to steal a base. Maddox finished with 355 wins when he retired in 2008. The only pitcher in the live ball era with more career wins was Warren Spahn, who retired in 1961. My uncle recommended you never hire Greg Maddox to paint your house because he'll only paint the corners. According to this website, Greg Maddox is third behind Don Sutton and Nolan Ryan at 480 quality stars. Nolan Ryan had 481 quality stars, Don Sutton 483. However, Greg Maddox only started 740 games. Nolan Ryan started 773 games, and Don Sutton started 774 games. So Greg Maddox had pretty much the exact same amount of quality starts with over 30 less starts. Greg Maddox's combination of intelligence, skill, and consistency on the mound is unparalleled. He wasn't a pitcher, he was a tactician and a master of his craft. That's why many believe Greg Maddox is the greatest pitcher of all time.